Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this service a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And find our inner Brackham show. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or this episode, we're going to go with um, Shanice and Fletz Alexander. Now, I know we done talked about them before, but sometimes it's just good to circle on back. So, for y'all who don't know, they've been together for at least 20 plus years, right? But to think about um, Shanice and Fletz, they was at like the top of their game in what would you say the early 90s? Mm -hmm. And then they had to file for bankruptcy by what, the early 2000s? And we're not talking about rich people bankruptcy. We ain't talking about Tony Braxton mm -hmm. bankruptcy when she still got Gucci. No. Or Versace. We're talking about poor people bankruptcy when talking they come about get your couch off when the... When you come through your house <laughs> until you gotta go. I think they had like, what, two, three kids? Yeah. And they had to actually live in an apartment. Like a one bed first. First off, they had to live with somebody, mm -hmm. and then once they transitioned, they transitioned like a one or two bedroom apartment just to get their shit together. I don't know. It was an unsung Oprah. It was on something, mm -hmm. and they told their story, and I damn near cried. Yeah. Talk about resilience, perseverance, and challenging your marriage. And the thing is, the kids either, because I think if you're going to be broke like that, your kids either need to be real poor, I mean, real young mm -hmm. or older. But they were right at middle age where the kids kind of knew right. something was going on, too. So I can only imagine the emotional, spiritual, psychological, physical effects that I had on them. But they came out stronger than ever, um, that never. Mm -hmm. Did I say about the Clark Sisters song? We've been trying through the fire. Out as real gold. What you thinking about them now? Hey, they the bomb. They you know, it's an oldie but goodie. Mm -hmm. But also, like, in the holidays. You know, uh, holiday times can be either the greatest thing for couples or it can be the worst thing ever. You know, yeah. you just got to be able to tough it out and mm -hmm. weather that storm, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 207. Hey, happy Friday. Oh, my goodness, this Friday is a blessing from the Lord. <sighs> Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's Black with no K. Um, yes, this has been. It's one not your check in, Neil. I'm just saying. I'm just agreeing <laughs> with you. Neil, I'm about to go into his check in. It has both personal. We're going to talk about a, a announcement in Pillow Talk. We sure. say that for Pillow Talk. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll say that for Pillow Talk. But professionally, it's been a tiring week and it's not even because of colonizers like me and the colonizers are tired. When I talk to my manager, she's exhausted. When I talk to my direct reports, they're exhausted. Like everybody just needs a break. Everyone is living for Friday, which is today. Mm -hmm. And you know, half of my team out going on vacation. When I tell you they was lining up the millions on my calendars, I was just going into meetings and not knowing what the hell was happening. Like <laughs> shit was just appearing on my calendar. And you know, I kind of go where the, when my computer beep, that's yeah. when I go. And so I show up to the media. I'm like, hey, so how can I help you? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm just out of here, Nayam. So is there anything you need? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> just enjoy. I'd be thinking to myself, hey, is Christmas next week? Right. <laughs> but I guess it kind of is, though, because what? Because Christmas is on a Monday this year, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it Tuesday? It's one of those days. Yeah, so a lot of them was like, I'm heading out. Because like I said, I got a lot of folks who are originally from the East Coast, so they don't get home as much. So I had a conversation with them about balance to say, you know, maybe you should go home sooner. And even if you work from home, right? So take the next few weeks off and maybe the first week in January, work from the East Coast. That way you're at home for the full three weeks, right? Yeah. Because I don't think one week's good enough. The second week you just get into the groove. You know what I'm saying? And you and child, you're young. Right. Why not say a third week, right? You know, I work. We're not doing um, brain surgery over here, mm -hmm. right? And I'm a decent boss, and I know what it is. I know what it is to be away from your families as, like, young professionals. And it's something about not rushing back, right? I think it took us a few years near them before we really stayed for 10-plus days. Yeah. Like, it was, like, long, like quick weekend trips. And also, you only can force someone to in a plane, right? That's nothing I had to put them on game, right? They're like, oh, Nayam's the plane ticket. First of all, they really shouldn't be complaining about plane tickets, but they are expensive, right? So if you and your 20-something, you bushing with the last minute, you could come out $1,800 for a plane ticket for two days. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm about that life, right? But like, if you leave now, it's cheaper, right? So if you leave right. between, if you leave now and come back like that second week in January, you can get a decent ticket. So I told him, why don't you just try that? Nayams, you're a great manager. My mom told me to tell you thank you. <laughs> what was that what do you think the mamas were saying when they said my manager told me to come on home early cause it was like I've been trying to get this kid home <laughs> the same thing my mama would say if I came home for that long <laughs> tell her thank you yeah I was like yeah you should go home early like you know and if you, cause they worried about like shit like vacation time like, 
we'll make it work. Thankfully, in tech, a lot of tech companies like don't you have vacation? Time. Like it doesn't work that way, right? Y'all you're gonna get, get your y'all take. yeah. You're gonna because you don't work because we're gonna work you, honey. When it's time to work, we're going to what work, work shit you. out of you. <laughs> And like who who's up right on Christmas Day doing anything Nobody. out here, I should say. So it's been that. But even at work and personally, like I have like this underlying I don't know, y'all is it y'all too? Do y'all have it too or can you relate? It's like this underlying bubbling as I anxiety that I can't pinpoint. Mm-hmm. Like it's just bubbling at the surface, right? Nothing paralyzing, um, no sad, no depression or anything. Um, and not like anxiety where it's like you know, it's not the anxiety was like, oh my goodness, I can't breathe. Like, it's not that, but it's like this, it's the anxiety like, damn, did I forget something? Mm-hmm. Like, it's something big you're missing. <laughs> and I have no idea what it is. And there's nothing checking the box personally or professionally. It's Christmas. To the point where I, I think I've asked my manager, let me know if there's anything. <laughs> is there something coming up? I think I said that with a while. I was like, I just, did you tell me you needed me to do something in, like, in an email? Or mm-hmm. <laughs> She was like, I don't think so. Do you need something? <laughs> I was like and I had to break down to her. I was like you know it's like there's this underlying something and I feel like I'm forgetting something so mm-hmm. let me know if like you know because sometimes you have conversations in passing you don't write it down and then it's gone it's yeah. gone into the nethers until that moment so I'm navigating through that I'm nannying I nannied like a mug this week y'all I nannied Monday through Friday this week so I had to go work in Silicon Valley I did that and then Monday I had to come home I had to work Tuesday come with the babies Wednesday all through the week mm-hmm. Monday through Wednesday it was the same family it was another Asian family it wasn't bad as the other one this one they were nice but for y'all parents I don't understand it makes me uncomfortable I have to change my profile I don't like coming to people's houses and the parents still be there oh why am I there <laughs> right because I'm the kid in me looking to you like well what can I do something I don't know ask your mama did you <laughs> <laughs> You know, or the kid gets distracted by their parent, right? Mm. Like, you know, when I tell, I, when they ask me to do something or I say no or something like them go their way, what do you do then? Ma, can I do it? Do you, like, they're going to do kid shit. So it was just really strange. Mm-hmm. And I did it for three days, though, and they were cool. I guess her husband was out of town on business, and I guess he usually helped her. Like, I was there for, like, the dinner range while she was cooking dinner and stuff. But the thing is, she had, like, a, what, a four-year-old and a seven-month-old. Mm-hmm. The thing is, though, actually, the, the easiest one of that group was a seven-month-old. Oh. Like you literally just put him down on the ground and gave him a I don't know a pot or a piece of something right and he was just going to town he was just teething if you just gave him something hard and cold he was gone because he was that, um, that's what I did I found one of his teethers mm-hmm. um, in the freezer because actually when the mom was upstairs with the the daughter who was four and he was like you know how you keep put you know they start drooling like a um what's up what's one of them Beethoven dogs mm-hmm. I was like oh my goodness Saint Bernard he, yeah I said like, oh my god he's drooling like a Saint Bernard in this bitch let me get him something I look in the freezer and I got him that when he started hitting his mouth look he was like this <laughs> I said oh it hurt don't it baby I said, <laughs> oh, I said get it. I said you need me to get it and I took it and I started rubbing it and he was looking at I thought he was eyes about to roll in the back of his head <laughs> <laughs> I said Jesus, these teeth, <laughs> these teeth are just. I swear, his eyes was about to roll in the back of his head because he was like, "What you doing?" Then he's like, "Oh, I." Cause you know they try to get it in the back, but they choke themselves. Mm-hmm. That's what he kept doing. He was like, "I said, wait a minute, let me hit it," <laughs> and then I hit it for him, and he loved it. Um, but the four year old, she peed on herself. Oh, and she was like, "Don't tell mommy." I said, "Well, the stench of piss." <laughs> it's there. <laughs> I was like, well, let's let's go get showered and we'll tell mom you just had a, how about you tell mom you had an accident? And this what this mama got about it and was like, it ain't no accidents if you stand there and do it. I was like, Oh, she right. Look, this is me. In front of company? That's why she told your ass not to tell mommy. I was like, damn, mom. You know, also with this mother, she was feeding her kids thick ass Asian meals. Yeah. Like not I shouldn't say it like that, but you know, I do it black style, right? If you have like black dinner. And you have like maybe greens, chicken, cornbread, all that stuff, right? You maybe give like green juice with mm-hmm. a little piece of cornbread, maybe with a green in it, right? The chicken, you ain't just gonna give them a chicken wing. You're gonna like pull the chicken back from the right and put it on their plate, right? But th- I get that right. So it's not that they had Asian food; they're Asian. But what she did was like treat this girl like she was a grown ass woman. It'd be like us getting a bowl of greens 
and a, a ham hock with the bone in it, mm-hmm. and then a whole ass thick ass piece of chicken and a big ass piece of hot water cornbread and douse it with hot sauce <laughs> and chow chow. I said, is they about to eat this? Near them for both the um. It, imagine the Asian version of that. So mm-hmm. they got all types of tofu and vegetables right. and custard based shit and sesame. Very pungent. Yeah. Like heavily dressed shit. That not only I guess the four year old is acceptable, but that's what the seven month old ate. And I was like, this motherfucker's about to choke. <laughs> Cause he can eat you. Uh-huh. And like I, she probably saw like I was just talking and I noticed he sat him down, whatever his name was, baby Bobo. And she just put the thick ass food in front of him and he just slammed his hand and started eating that shit. She was like, Oh, oh yeah, my tears, we went straight from breastfeeding to solid food. Oh. And she said, it is about them knowing food and the texture. Mm-hmm. So you can see the baby couldn't really. He, so he just like smashing stuff on his face uh-huh. and like holding on to the broccoli for dear life. Because the thing is not just broccoli or uh-huh. broccolini, right? It's broccolini dick and Szechuan soft or right. sweet chili paste. I said, is that sweet chili paste? <laughs> <laughs> for a seven month old? Oh, my God. So that threw me off a little bit. Like I can get it, right? Because I get the concept. Like it's not, I'm not necessarily shocked that she was like, my kids never did pre RA food. They went to whole food. The, like eating whole food mm-hmm. it was shocked to me is how much seasoning she had on that shit i turned to a white woman oh my god <laughs> just give him a sweet potato because i think i would do something like, like i would chop up maybe a sweet potato mm-hmm. a little piece of protein probably a lean piece and then let them go to town maybe a little salt and pepper it's babies right mm-hmm. we just trying no sis had chili paste hoisin sauce sesame oil fish sauce do that seem strange to you and not? kimchi and kimchi <laughs> And the baby was fucking it up. And, the, you know, maybe it's not even a seasoning thing. Maybe it's, I didn't know seven, p- babies who were seven months could chew. Uh-huh. Like, can you, do they have teeth? Like, that's why I kept trying to the look at his mouth. hard-ass gums. <laughs> that I was rubbing on. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what threw me off. And that's not just a season, right? Because that's a cultural thing. But, them gums, he don't got no teeth. He don't got no molars. What is, what's it called? What's the bat teeth called? Like to grind. Yeah, I got you. I don't know. What so call. he was like, had this piece of broccolini for a good 30 minutes. He just kept like he just sucking, sucking on it. it. <laughs> he was sucking in nutrition. And this her chew, 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 chew. I said, he don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be his advocate. Oh. <laughs> and then um, my next family was this white family. Um, and it was 11 month old. And I was there while they were at a holiday party. And when I tell you, he was cool. And then the mama went to go get dressed and he lost his white colonizer mine yeah he cried and he cried so much that he turned red i mm. thought he was gonna have a um seizure oh he, he did one of those cry and choke shit <laughs> yeah. i said get it together <laughs> oh are you back ready to the point where i gave him a drink of water and he drunk the water and then spit the water like and then pushed the bottle and started crying like he needed water <laughs> i said oh i ain't giving you nothing else <laughs> you're just gonna be coughing the only reason i gave it to him because his parents were still there because he's like eh, eh, eh. You know, old black mama. Is you done? You done yet? <laughs> and that you can tell the moms was a little sad. I was like, you just need to leave, and he'll be okay. And the dad like, come on, mm-hmm. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with him. But in that fifteen minutes, he calmed down. And I don't know what happened. It was like the the spirit of the Holy Ghost jumped in him, and he was just like this. <gasps> and I was like, I looked at him. I said, he stopped breathing. <laughs> 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 shit do this baby CPR and he looked cause it made I, then he gets cause we both look nervous and we looked at each other and we looked like how me and, y'all can't see us but how me and Niram look and we did a stare down <laughs> and he just got over it and I said you hunger mm. and that's when we start eating and he started smacking his mouth and shit yeah and that's why he had two things of baby food we drank milk I think I heated his milk up a little too warm they got one of them baby warmers mm-hmm. that motherfucker seemed hot oh and I put it on my skin. I said, ooh, hot. Because yeah. he put some in his mouth. He said, ah, 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 ah. Like, he was like, ah. oh. I said, what is it? I said, it's a little warm. Oh, it's like a sous vide maker? Yeah. I thought those get it to the appropriate temp. Like, I didn't think it would get it that warm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I opened the cap and let it sit. You know, I didn't want to be funny. I wanted to put an ice cube in there for him. <laughs> <laughs> but we played, and he finally went to sleep. And um, that was interesting. And then today, I got a family that I'm going back on Friday, which is a repeat, and then I'm taking the damn weekend off. Mm. And I'm going to take actually a couple weeks off of nannying. I'll go back maybe at the end of the year in January. But I think from here on out, I can't do no more babysitting because I got to start winding it down at Silicon Valley. I hear you. Well, you know, I'm supposed to be nannying, so. Are you? Yes. I don't know, Neil. Now, now that I've done it and I've been around some families, I don't know if I'm comfortable with you doing it. Why? Because just you being a black man. Mm. Like they, they scared of me as a black woman sometimes. Mm. Right? And I can only imagine 
if you roll up to the door. Like, or you might be working with particular, like they might need you when the kids are older, mm -hmm. like 10, 11, 12, or maybe like six, when they want to run and jump, like that might be better for you. But I, I worry about that. Like, mm -hmm. be careful. You okay. know what I'm saying? Did you think what, when you interviewed to do it, did they mention that or anything? No. Did you bring it up? Yeah. And it's like, you know, you'll be fine. <gasps> it's like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, did you ask them how many males do it? No. Okay. So do you need me to help write the questions? Mm -hmm. Or is there, could they put you in contact with a Manny to get some advice? Why don't you email them? I can email her. And just ask, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a community of support. But I think you should look into the dog walking. I think that's more your alley. Mm -hmm. And it's not as long as a time commitment. Right? And you can get you about 10 dogs. And go and you learn them and you walk them. And I heard they get like $50 a dog. Come on. Shit. And you get exercise. <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I was worried about. What you talking about? I'm serious. You, I, I would do that instead of babysitting because I'm not a biggest fan of ch children. Uh -huh. Because I find myself when I'm babysitting like cussing them out in my head. Because <laughs> when I start, when the one was crying, I don't ever say it out loud, right? Because I know babies absorb that energy. But in my head, he was hollering. I said, "What the fuck is you crying about? Just shut that shit. Shut the hell up." Mm -mm -mm. You want to take it back old school? Shut I just wanted, I just wanted to put him in the crib and walk away. Shut your mouth, I give you something. Cry about. What you hollering for? All right, keep on that hollering. But if I could, I would do the dog walking. But the thing is, dog walkings are usually nine to five mm -hmm. and not on the weekends because the owners are working, right? They're working their nine to five and they want to be with their dogs on the right. weekend. But if I had the option. I choose a fur baby for a real human any day. Petty. <laughs> All right. What other news? Did you see how Kotex don't recall tampons mm -hmm. after um they some done completely unraveled inside yeah. the woman body? Yes. You motherfuckers can't get what well, ain't they post unravel? But <laughs> y'all know what I mean, and not in a good way. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all just be careful out here. If you got any of that Kotex, um, be sure to um. Check it out. Make sure it's not recalled. I'm trying to find out what is the actual one. Is it actually? If you got anything related to Kotex, just return that motherfucker. It's the ones that were sold in the 18, the 34, and the three count. And it was reported that mold had been found in several of these. Mm -hmm. That is disgusting. So they've been. There was produced some anywhere between October 2016. If you have anything Kotex, throw the bitch out. <laughs> and it's affected tampons were sold in 18, 34 three counts so basically all of them they also included the 34 count multi-packs it's not clear how many individual packets have been sold millions if you purchase one of these type and you can enter the lot number enter it on the recall website if you got cotets return that bitch go throw it out the house mm -hmm. because it's, it's more of a two-year span so from october 7 2016 to last to, week uh, yeah october 16 2018 is when these two years uh shit's been uh produced and women might have been getting, like, all types of infections yeah. or, like, you know, pH stuff just off balance and don't even know what's going on with them. Right. Because, like, mold. pieces, mold, but also, like, pieces of t uh, tampons just being stuck up in there. I've been had to get bougie with my feminine products. If it ain't organic, cotton, unscented, ain't none, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm the one who pay way too much money for it. I guess it ain't too much money now, honey. Ain't no mold in my coochie. But <laughs> <laughs> for tampons, all my friends see, they be like, what is this? I'm like, girl, organic cotton, basically cotton out the field. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time for y'all messing me up. Right? Because, mm -hmm. never mind, I'm going to say it started going all downhill with that talcum powder. Giving us all type of cervical cancer. You ain't been right since that. That talcum. I remember that talcum. Because, you know, you put a little talcum. Not, first of all, you don't put talcum powder in your vagina. But, you know, you use talcum powder like on put, your chest. Yeah, I put it in that fupa area. Not the fupa. Oh, no, no, I don't put it in that fupa <laughs> area. But, like, you would put, I, like, I would put powder, like, under my arm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you're hot, doing it, you're going somewhere. Talcum powder can't come. I ain't bought talcum powder in six years. <laughs> I said, throw, throw the talcum powder away. Mm-hmm. Look, if I want cornstarch, I'm going in the food aisle. Right. I don't even want the one in the health and beauty aisle because I feel like it's still talcum powder. If it's I need the, any form of, too much. if I want any type of drying, I'm going to the food area. <laughs> I want safe. I want food grade cornstarch. <laughs> I don't want anything from Lush. <laughs> <laughs> you want something that you can make a gravy with? <laughs> <laughs> I want food. I want something I can ingest. <laughs> something you can make a gravy with and put it uh, put it under your titties at the same Come time. Come <laughs> on, I'm just trying to swap off some sweat because I can't wear no deodorant. Because the aluminum in the deodorant caused the cancer too. So I'm sweating and funky. Something got to give. Mm -hmm. But y'all be careful out there. Again, if you got them tampons from Kotex, 
Actually, it doesn't even matter what it is. If it says Kotex anything, return the motherfuckers immediately mm. and go buy you some of them organic um, Lola's tampons that's overpriced. They overpriced and they're at the very, very top shelf. You got to look up. Oh, they're not even at eye mm -hmm. level. You got to look up for them. This is top shelf and, shit Because the here. thing is you look up and then you look away because they cost a lot. <laughs> you be like, sure, I ain't nobody paying no $20. Pay it. <laughs> Do you want mold in your coochie? P pay it. Niran, what's going on with you? How the hell? So trifling, trifling. So where's the water getting at? Right. And where's the proper circulation? Like, what? So the cotton is, so it's some cheap, great-ass cotton? Or mixture cotton hybrid? Because the, the cotton should be breathable, so that should dry out. It shouldn't mold. But you, that packaging, though, that packaging mm. is all plastic. That's true. So if you got any type Can't of damp, uh cotton in there, yeah. and with that plastic, because you know it's double layers of plastic, so yeah. you, you, know, you got that the applicator, the, mm -hmm. the little bag can come in, and a reusable bag. Uh -huh. That zip. The reusable bag. You know that. You know that zip bag y'all be having y'all shits in. Oh, you mean the holder? Oh, yeah. near, everybody, don't have, I have that in my. You know, I'm talking. About, I carry a bag. I carry like a little in my purse, a zip bag with like feminine hygiene products mm -hmm. and uh, like Tylenol and stuff. Everyone don't carry that, but uh -huh. yeah. Nigga said the other ziplock. Hey, you know, y'all be having all types of shit. Yeah, yeah. What's going on with you? Um, one thing I'm excited about is the five heartbeats is coming to Broadway. Get the you you know what? The five heartbeats is coming to Broadway, and y'all know what else is coming to Broadway? What? Tina Turner. Her what? Life story. Jesus. Jesus. Both of those. But talk about the five heartbeats. I've just decided Shout that out to Robert Townsend. That they are putting this shit together, y'all. Shout out to Robert Townsend. Yes. He's he's a goat. He is an underrated goat. Can BT do an honor for him? You know they do the BT honors? Mm-hmm. But Robert Townsend has given us so much good black television, mm. black movies. He's been everyone black daddy, black uncle. Now he's getting a little older, right? right. He, he ain't in granddad age, but you know, he he's giving me older uncle realness now, right? Like he has given us black excellence before black excellence was a thing. And he has inspired us to be so proud of our culture, of like just us. Mm -hmm. But again, before it was cute. So it's gonna be oh, him Rob, and Kenyon uh Kenyon Ivy Ring is coming he together. He another go. The Waynes don't get they do. The Way I, I think I said that before. The Waynes brothers, especially that Kenan, they don't get they do. They don't get their due diligence. Mm -hmm. And they are legendary black people. Like can we get can like people make shirts or something that says I stand for Robert Townsend? I guess I can make them huh? Like Robert Townsend is and this where do you begin? Even like the crazy movies he made. What is that? Meteorite Man? Like yeah, even Meteor the funnier Man. ones. Are, like even like kind of the goofier ones. It's fun. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. He makes us appreciate our culture at so many different levels. So everything from like the five heartbeats to that, right? It shows that we're not monolithic. Right. And, and he does it the, I don't want to say the right way, but he does it so authentically, mm -hmm. right? That it feels real. I'm excited about that. Where is it at? Is it like Broadway, New York, or is it like um, traveling Broadway? <laughs> Traveling Broadway. Or like, you know how they do blood, like Tyler Perry. Actually, Tyler Perry is doing his last play. Yeah. And I wouldn't be too mad about seeing it. Because he said he retired Medea. Yeah. As mad as you Negroes going to be, Medea is a part of our heritage. It is. In our, um, I should say, our, um, what am I, not cultural, what am I thinking? Not cinema. Like, theor like you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, she's like The a arts. The arts. She's a trope. What the fuck is I don't I don't know if I want to co-sign that I'm not sure if I know the definition oh of trope. God, God. What Let's is trope? See. You know, I, word like what Crystal say words mean things. I want to make sure I don't know if I know the full definition. I think I'm spelling trope. That's um, a thrope. What you just said, T R O P E. What do you mean, like a figure or symbol yeah. of something? What does that? Yeah, a figurative, metaphoric use of a word or expression. See, y'all see, I don't play. I gotta. That's one thing with touched by white hands taught me. You don't disagree on words you don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Say it. Say it quickly. I don't know what that means. You need. I need a definition. Because a lot of times the people who say it don't know what it means either. Mm -hmm. But you, yeah, I agree. But I think it's uh, it, it, it's a staple in the black community. It's a staple in the black Like it, good, bad, or ugly, right? I think Tyler Perry gave something to theoretical black culture. Probably using the word theoretical in the wrong place. But you know what I'm talking about? Like Broadway, stage. Um, so I'm thinking about wanting to see it. What do you think? Because I, I, I know I want to see what's this new Medea movie coming. Medea goes to a funeral. When mm -hmm. Medea go to that funeral, I know Tyler Perry is going to show out on that one. Is he getting raunchier or is that just me? I think so, but also I think he getting to a point where he don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> it was something about because the last couple movies I watched, I had no choir. It's something about that boo too. And what was the um and uh, acrimony? <laughs> it's something about those movies. 
that didn't have the, the polish that I'm used to from a, with, with the, with the from black, a Tyler Perry movie. A, they had no black Pentecostal on it, and they had no Koji on it. And so, they had, had no Kurt Franklin intermission. Even though I know it's a Halloween movie, there still used to be a way that Just Tyler say we love the Lord. that church choir in there somehow. He did it. That didn't happen. Yeah, in acrimony. I I enjoy acrimony. And then I also felt like something was up with that editing. Like it, it almost <laughs> felt like I edited the movie. Don't do that. And he <laughs> know he could have did better than that. And he has done better with that. The thing is, ac- acrimony had the potential. Uh-huh. Didn't the ac- acrimony had the potential to be excellent? I almost wish he almost did a made for TV type stuff. Yeah, I and agree. maybe stretched it out. Maybe to like a two night or something, like during the holidays. But I think because some of that editing, acrimony ain't get his just due. But Taraji did that. Tyler did that. And that motherfucker, I forgot his name, who became a millionaire. Oh, yeah. Who ain't. At least he gave Taraji some money. But uh, sis, I don't think I would have stuck around that long. I also think it was something about them um, them, uh, PowerPoint slideshows that that was coming through. What? You remember when we did the definitions and it came up on a PowerPoint slideshow? It, it was PowerPointy. <laughs> but it was a good movie. It was. It was like, if y'all see some other movies, it's definitely worth seeing that. Um, I cannot wait to see if Bill Street could talk. <laughs> I'm so excited. Actually, I need Niram to go ahead and pre-order that. I'm taking over your checking out on Niram. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, about it. Niram let go of that glass. I'm sorry. I was thirsty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's just been a long week interviews informational interviews um and me applying for this nanny job then i'm about to be nanny i mean black nanny black man nanny. That's exactly. yeah and black you see, nanny you see what i be going through you sure we will see okay we'll see and all i need is one bad interaction all set <laughs> i i gave it a college try you silly <laughs> yeah other night you want to walk into some pillows out yeah well, we got some news. Okay. Nia, why don't you say the news? Because I feel like they're judging me. <laughs> no. I feel like everyone's judging me. <laughs> they're judging me, Nia. We got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to put You going to put a picture up on Instagram? Sure. Not only. For just, real, Nia. Don't do it like you say you're going to do it. Well, why don't you take my phone and do it now? Oh, okay. Not only just any type of dog. Desi 2.0. A black poodle. A black miniature poodle. <laughs> Desi 2.0. It's on roll with me, y'all. And go. What do you mean? First of all, it's not a... It's not Desi. No. We're actually still debating the name because they don't know their name. The person that... The, where we got it from the shelter said they don't know their name. Because it was a stray. It was a stray. Um... What do I forget? We think in between two names, and y'all let us know which one you like the best. Mm-hmm. We're thinking well, three. We're thinking between Mabel, um, Barbara, and Sophia mm. because she looked like an old black woman. Yes, <laughs> but it's a poodle mix because I wanted a doodle. Remember y'all? I wanted the um, you remember poodle, one, a golden doodle, a or, golden doodle, or a labyrinth doodle, a golden doodle or a labyrinth doodle, right? So a golden retriever mixed with a poodle or something like that. But y'all know the ones we seen that was at the show. They go in the um. 15 minutes so if you ain't just standing at the shelter door when they come in you ain't getting them sure. and or if you go to a breeder right them dogs cost anywhere between two to three thousand mm-hmm. dollars a pop just to get them in a leash so you know if that's something i was gonna do that was gonna take some time to, to go ahead and say that wouldn't have been fiscally sound to do and also it's something about getting a rescue dog right because i'm a person with a history i feel like my dog need to have a history need to be like redemption too and what happened here? I was working from home because I was tired. I think I had um, was nannying late and mm-hmm. just wasn't feeling myself, right? And so I was like, and I think I told Nero, I'm like, I'm all set, right? Because we went, tried to go for a couple of dogs, but we were always just so late because Nero, like we set these firm guidelines, what we wanted, age range, everything. Yeah. And fine, I'm not disagreeing, but I was just getting tired of the hustle and bustle because we were doing rescue, right? You got to be on it for the rescue. Like you got to be there, um, go play with the dog. Usually it's a wait. Put a deposit down. Like, it's competitive out here. Don't you feel like, I feel like back in Mass or um, Detroit or, like, um, the East Coast, Canada, why that's no. New England, they just be like, child, they've been here for 10 months. Look, you want this dog? <laughs> we can't kill him. Yeah, okay. What, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> or you can just call them. Like, is that dog there? They be like, yeah, you want him? Oh, yeah, we'll hold him for a week. Just come when you can. When you can. <laughs> out here, they be like, you need to come here. Right. What's Fill your out background? An application that's 20 pages long. But this one was right. And remember, what did you think when I showed you? 
I was like, here comes Desi 2.0. Are you serious? When you first seen the yes. picture, did you think it was going to go home with a dog? Yeah. Why you say that? I said, because I'm a prophet. I said that 2019 was going to be your year. Uh-huh. But it's 2018. Well, <laughs> I'm still right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And so we went in and I was like, well, let's just see. We're not going to know. Like, and then you were actually when I said, why don't you go in first? Because if the dog's not feeling you, Mm -hmm. I don't even need to go back there. Right. Like, I don't need to like fall in love with this dog. Nero come in and start growling and barking. Right. Because that's Mm -hmm. what that was really the problem with Desi. Right. If Desi, if Nero wasn't with me, I probably would still have Desi because Desi could not. He don't know. Nero. Desi did not want Nero near me. Mm -hmm. He didn't want him to touch me. He didn't want like anything to do with it. No. Desi don't like man energy. Yeah, and Desi didn't like men. Like I think if it was just me, we might have been okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I was like, you go in if you're not vibing. Like dogs start barking, losing their mind. Let's just turn around and go to lunch. Mm-hmm. And when I went in, and I didn't hear nothing <laughs> to the point where I had to peek around the corner. Uh huh. And I was like, well, I'm gonna talk to the lady, right? Because the other deal breaker before I even go in, I'm like, what is the medical history? <laughs> Did they got the worms? Right. Did they got the flu vaccine? Right. Do they got diabetes? Do they got diabetes? Do they got cancers? Do they missing the leg? Is they missing the eye? Like, I need to know because I don't have time to go through chemo with a dog at no. this point in my life because I already got bubbling anxiety. <laughs> so the woman's like, no, she's good. She got a little tartar, but you know, that's probably because she just have t- She's a puppy, so you still got time to reverse it. Nothing. No, no, no. And I'm like, okay, then it's the final thing. I was like, well, how much is your adoption? I'm like, because you know, that's the other thing. Adoption fees out here be a grip. Yeah. You're like, five, six hundred for an adoption? You know, I'm from Detroit, where adoptions be about a hundred, two hundred dollars, mass two hundred dollars, right? What to cut it even. About? Free cat Friday, right? So I'm like, I'm ready out here. Like, this is about to be five, six hundred dollars. What we talking? I hit the round. This one was like, oh, you're in luck. It's our holiday special. She's twenty dollars. <laughs> I said, fuck. I was like, well, let me go down here and check them. And then I went in there. And what, what was y'all experience together in there? Well, initially when I went in there, she was a little scary. Yeah. Um, but at least she wasn't growling. That was no. what Des- Desi was ready to fight like a pit bull. No, you know she was like hand scared. Like yeah. you know, I was trying to pet her, and she was like, "I don't know you," because you know near I'm a big nigga. Like what the hell going on? Yeah, dodging my hand. Yeah. So I just like just let my hand out there, and yeah. you know, we only uh, put on coconut butter, Co- uh, coconut, coconut oil. oil. Oh my god. Um, for lotion. So, she, so I just put my hand out there, and I ain't pay her ass no attention. Here comes her ass, sniffing, licking, sniffing and licking on my knuckles, <laughs> getting all the uh, coconut oil, getting all the coconut oil in between my crevices. <laughs> and then from that point on, she was just like just chilling. Oh, then I came in. Mm-hmm. And then what did you try? Do you think she responded to me? Oh, she she actually walked, uh, greeted you like a little bit more openly than like me. <laughs> this is happen when you babysit. <laughs> Because she was like, she was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> I don't know what you think this is. I don't know what you, I don't think, I don't know what this is and you don't know what this mm-hmm. is either. You stay on your side of it. I'm like, I, she's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. What? But you came in, hello. And she was like wagging her tails yeah. and shit. I said, what that but shit is this? <laughs> so we, we got it, y'all. This, what was the demographic? So I think it's a poodle in a schnauzer mix. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking mm-hmm. it's a schno- schnoodle. That's what mm-hmm. I think they call it. So it was a schnauzer, a miniature schnauzer in a miniature poodle yep. mixed together. Because um, mm-hmm. they got hair like my. She got um, 4C hair like me. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Was she scared of the brush? She because is, you can't put no brush through no dry 4C hair. Well, she is scared of the brush. I, me too. You can't put that through hair. You got to you gotta get some conditioner on that. Mm-hmm. Loosen up that curl pattern. That's why we're going to get her um, groom actually today as you're speaking. Because she, you know, she was straight, so she probably got some mats on her. Mm-hmm. Um, and we need to get those professionally. I keep turning back so I can see her. And we're talking quietly because she's oh. literally sleeping under our lids. And I'm trying not to have her lose her mind. That dog will be all right. And say anything. But I'm excited about it. I didn't know what happened. Um, it definitely feels different from when we got Desi. Mm-hmm. And I was worried it wasn't. Like how? I don't know. I feel like Desi was like how a teen pregnancy must feel. <laughs> it's kind of cute until you go into labor mm-hmm. and then you realize you got to race <laughs> and then you still you got to go to high school and your mama cussing you out 
<laughs> because she got to go to work and you need to take care of this baby. I feel like now I'm grown and go to job with this dog, right? Because I feel like we set expectations. We asking questions. Like, even the way we introduced it to the house, before she even came in this house, Niram took her on, like, a two-mile walk. Yes. You'd be like, oh, sis, your first night, I'm going to need you sleepy. Mm-hmm. Like, we're trying to, tr- like, we're just, I don't know, we're just more thoughtful. Yes. And I guess in a more stable piece part, pace in our life, too. Yeah, you know, that and also, like, you know, having Desi for that you know that brief stint. Don't do that. I yeah. need all y'all to stop clowning me about Desi. What? Desi was a bad dog. Oh, <laughs> come again? He was not the most well behaved. I do miss him though. He always gonna have a heart, a piece of my heart. <laughs> you heard it here first, y'all. <laughs> she has never agreed with me about Desi. <laughs> ever at all when i kept telling her desi was a bad dog <laughs> where you're bad <laughs> oh you over here minimizing for the fucking dog well, okay anyway, i'm sure y'all don't want to keep hearing about this dog i'm sure the weekend will have more up to date but we'll mm-hmm. see and pretty house trained yeah no accidents as of yet no um you know we still get she's still getting to know us and yeah I, think about desi that's why I knew oh her. we keep going back Yes. Desi, um, it's like Nia when he talked to certain women. He was like, I could sometimes I want to ask women like, who who hurt you so bad, sister, that you can never love another? Desi almost did that to us with dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just knew. As soon as we got Desi in the fucking house, this nigga on top of the couch. How did he get up there? His legs are only six inches long. He just jumped. And up we have there. a tall couch. Yes. <laughs> that we both kind of look like. Did you put him up there? I was no. like, I'm making dinner. <laughs> This nigga up here walking on a damn couch. couch. Looking at us. He was too old, though. He was just sitting his way. That's all. Mm-hmm. We just weren't the right family for him. He actually probably needs some kids who getting that ass. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Mm-hmm. So is it Mabel, Barbara, or Sophia? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, um, actually, maybe we should do a before and after for the grooming. Or no, I don't want them talking about my dog. Oh, yeah. To do the after. Okay. Because she a little, lived a little. She's a little lived in now. Yeah. You got any other thoughts, Niram? Niram went crazy. Niram the one acting like he a uh, first time mama. No. Niram done went to Walmart and the dollar store and got every item. I ain't gonna get every item, but I just know some things that I wish I would have had with Desi. Yeah. And I just went ahead and got them. Gotcha. Um, other than that, just just getting to know her mm-hmm. and learning her because, like hell, you know, it's just only the first couple of nights. And so, hey, right, I think like Desi starts on his full ass two weeks in. Two weeks in. So we shall see with her. <laughs> you said his full black his ass. full black, black ass. ass. <laughs> it was like one day he woke up and was like, I oh, think I'm going to start some shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Neil. Mm-hmm. We got some more pills. So we'll keep y'all updated. I may or may not start an Instagram page. Maybe I'll just go back to Disney the dog. <laughs> and just and make it. it Mabel the dog. <laughs> That's shady. I'm going to still leave Desi pictures on there <laughs> <laughs> to be petty. <laughs> So you niggas won't throw it in my face. Mm, mm, she just mm. run through dogs, now y'all beats. Hey. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, we got a little bit more pillow talk when we get in shout out Friday. Yeah, look, I'm past it. So we run through dogs. We just run through. <laughs> At the, you know, if this one go back, I'm saying Naomi, how about you just like foster dogs? <laughs> yeah, that maybe that's the fit. Where you only keep them for about a week or two. Yes. Uh, yeah, and you just hold them, make them not scared no more, and send them on out. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe. Why you keep looking back? Because I'm scared any moment they gonna. Um, Mabel, I think it's Mabel. Gonna jump on the bed and be looking at us no. and give us a two point I don't think Mabel had that personality. Yeah. And plus, you got that damn leash on. I still got that leash on her as you put her bitch down. <laughs> Nero, this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I walked in the house and the dog still got the leash on. I'm like, Nero, why don't you take the leash off? He's like, just in case I need to catch her. <laughs> what? Yes. Y'all, we don't have a mansion. We literally have. A, a, I won't even say a two bedroom apartment. We have one point five bedroom apartment. It can't be more than eight hundred square feet. Where's the dog going? Look. <laughs> That you can't catch her. So there was this instance whenever Desi fucked up yeah. or got mad or just didn't, didn't want to deal with us. The way our couches are built, like they're high, mm-hmm. but the backs are they're like slanted. slanted. Yeah. So they don't fit flush against the wall. So when they flush against the wall, they're still like this triangular area that like it's perfect for a small dog like Desi and able to like just go behind the couch. Mm-hmm. and just chill and we got a sectional so like the whole half of the wall is just covered with couch and Desi do something bad or whatever his ass just go behind the fucking couch i ain't got time to be moving the whole couch to get back there and then he start growling and then he start growling and starting trying to bite me and shit I got, that's why i keep that leash on her 
We and, just gonna drag her. And I ain't playing with her. <laughs> now, how many didn't know? I bought a twenty. I, I bought two leashes. I bought the one we walk outside with, the little yeah. six foot leash. And the one you a light one. And then I got uh, the 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 trainer, the training twenty foot leash. I just tied that. I just tried. I just tied the leash to. When me. I got in the house tonight, Nirum had the leash tied to him. I and just tied the leash Mabel to Mabel greeted me at the door. Nirum was in the. This is how small our house is. <laughs> so Mabel greeted me at the door, and it was a leash string, and Nirum was in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm like, "What is this string?" I said, "Why is she tied to you?" Because I need to always know where this dog is at, it's at least crazy. for the first couple of days. Oh my so I need to be like, "Oh, it's quiet. Let me just pull on this leash." And then what she do when you pull on the leash? The dog just come? come back. From whatever well, we hell she's We got to train. Y'all got tips on how to train a dog. Their name. I think we don't went on YouTube and found some things. Mm-hmm. We just got to keep doing the a site association. So say their name when they look at us. Reward them. Mm-hmm. Because we got to teach her her name. Because we don't know her real name. No. I wonder what happened to her owners. You think they let her go on purpose? Or you think they're looking for her? I don't know. What I'm nervous about is that their owners come back. And they be like, that's our dog. Because I can't keep her if somebody come tell me that. That's going to hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. So I'm just actually trying to pray and get through this next month or so. Because I'm assuming after a month or so, people will stop looking. Well, they said they had the dog for like two weeks. So that's what I, I'm I'm a little nervous about that. Because I'm like, this is all just pretty well behaved. It doesn't look like it was abused or anything. Like, I'm worried that it's a whole family, a whole ass family looking for this dog. <laughs> Me on a ranch. Mabel sleep. Me on a ranch. <laughs> this dog then. Change family's got a new name, name. and everything. <laughs> Come on, man. We got the pillow talk. We ain't going to keep boring the folks. A um, couple short things. Just uh, just a win. So the Women's Tennis Association said Serena Williams can wear what the fuck she want to wear. Of course she can. They still getting on her about that? Yes. What does she don't wear now? Jesus. And so they said she can wear a cat suit with or without a skirt. They don't got The whites don't have anything else to do. Mm-hmm. What does Serena say? Kick my, kiss my ass. Yeah, because, you know, the, the French opening was all. Up on her ass about what did they think was modesty the, and shit like that. She was covered from her throat to her knees. I mean, to her um, ankles. Mm-hmm. What do they want? She just has body yaddy yaddy. Yeah, something that the white. Never. Mind. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Exactly. I'm not doing it. But you know, I, I'm glad they went ahead. That do Venus have a Serena? line out? Serena, does yeah. she have an athletic line out? She actually just recently, from what I heard, dropped a line because I know that's Ser- who need it. I know um, Venus have a line. No, no. Oh, okay. But you know, they got two different body shapes, though. I don't fit either one. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think I'm here for a Serena line. She be uh-huh. wearing some cute stuff, though. She do? Yeah, and you know what? If it's like Serena, I know, I know it's going to be layered with that spank. So it mm-hmm. might. She, I think Serena would do a good job at translating um, um, active wear to a more voluptuous body types or not the stereotypical athletic white phenotype when it comes to athletics like we need that is there an athletic brand out there that does that y'all i'm hoping it's serena but you know what i'm talking about near that need to be your space like you know sometimes you need a little more give like stop giving me these tight ass shirts i need an a-line workout shirt Mm. like stop giving me these shirts to be gripping up on my ass right like give me a little bit of give me a peplum Give me a peplum workout top so I feel a little confident when I go in. Oh. And I need everything to be high rise, high waisted, everything, but not the high waisted that cut into your skin. Mm-hmm. It's a difference. So I needed to be two different. Um, y'all know what I'm talking about. The bigger people, y'all know what I'm talking about. I needed to be them paddings, right? Yeah. If you just do the straight up high waist, it will cut your fucking circulation off. You would die. <laughs> you would look good, but you would die. But if you got the two padding, <laughs> you can breathe. I never heard that. <laughs> what? You I only die. look. I, I look the shape that I am now. I look best in high waisted everything. Mm-hmm. But high waisted is very uncomfortable mm. if it's not made. If it cuts the wrong way, like if it cuts right above your breast bone the wrong way, you would think somebody's suffocating you. And you're just like, is it too tight? What it is? But it's just the way when you sit down, it kind of cuts into your skin. Interesting. Did you know this? No, I didn't. Do men have high waisted things? No, but they need to make some. That's what y'all should get. That'll probably be an innovation. Us girls been doing that for a while. Yeah. High waisted, just anything. So workout, jeans, all of it saves you. Yeah. All right. Because I got a high ass crack, so Ooh. I need something. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, that helps if you got wide booties, too. Mm-hmm. Helps if you got wide booties. Or also it's beneficial to, well, sometimes it's been, if you have like a smaller waist, sometimes it's not good because sometimes it's too big. Mm-hmm. But if you got a big, big stomach, honey, put all that apple shape in that high waist <laughs> and suck it in. Shout out to Serena. Next. Yeah. Uh, other good black news. 
Janet Jackson finally got introduced to the she's not Rock in and it? Roll Hall of Fame. I thought she had been in this. Nope. Good for sis. So she made it to the 2019 uh, Rock and Roll. Yeah, Good. Well, actually, I need to check this damn list. I some people I already thought was in there. And they being colonizers and try to slide it past us. Who else you thought was in there? I, I don't know. I need to look at the list. I assume Janet Jackson was. So we need to go back to that whole era mm-hmm. to make sure everyone, Michael Jackson in there. Yeah. Like we need to go through and make sure everyone from that whole crew was in there then. So let's see. The Cure, Def Leppard, Stevie Nicks. Oh, Stevie Nicks one in there. Uh, Radiohead, Radiohead, Roxy Music. Uh, I don't know. Oh, the Zombies. The Zombies. Oh. Yeah. Def Leppard, I don't know. No, okay. Each inductee is, is recognized for having and contributed over 25 years oh, okay. of music. is excellent. I guess we around that time. For, no, actually, she done done had over 30 years. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it's right there. Her first album was in 1982. Yeah, so she done had over 30. Yeah. Okay, so now I need to go check the list. And can I submit? I don't know. Look, can I sit? Look, near hit the button. Can I sit nominations? <laughs> I don't know. That's how it works. Or can I complain? I thought Stevie Nitz would have been in there already, though. What they call her? White Witch. Mm-hmm. Black Velvet in the mean. I do like a good Stevie Nitz. Damn, they only let seven people in this year? Yeah, okay. So the 2019. Oh, LL Cool J ain't make it? No, he was a nominee. Keep going down. Craftwork? Oh, don't do that, Neil. Don't don't hate. Craftwork ain't in there yet? I thought LL Cool J was already in Rufus there. Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. Whoa. Rufus featuring Shaka Khan is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No. I think she maybe should have gotten there before Janet. What you think? Do they have all the inductees? Hit the yeah. inductees list. Your choice. See, you didn't vote. Oh, why didn't you tell us to start up? Fan, fan vote. Industry vote. <gasps> what did I just say? You can become a member. I am. Can you go to the inductees? Rufus and Shaka Khan not on here? No. Nope. Oh my goodness! Please tell me Riri in there. Okay, we got Abba, Aerosmith, ACDC. Okay, Al Green, of course. Al Green. He was inducted in '95. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Um, Alice, Tuz- oh Aretha Franklin in there. Thank you, Jesus. I thought I was gonna have to start a riot. Keep going there. BB King's in there. I'm going just looking at the black people. Barry Gordy's in there. I guess he ain't really. No, nope, nope, I ain't doing it. Keep going. Keep going there. I've got to make sure the blacks in there. Yeah. Okay, Billy Holiday. Billy Holiday was not inducted into 2002. 2000, baby. Oh, I'm sorry, 2000. Bill Withers, keep going. Bob Marley, Bo Diddley, Bobby Blue Blank. Come on, if you think you're lonely now, Bobby won't. How, how, Bobby Blue, Blue Band, Band get in? Get in, before- <laughs> get, get in before Blue Holiday. Billy Holiday. Billy, you know what I'm trying to say. Did you say Blue Holiday? Yeah, when, did, put, when did Bobby Blue Blaine get in? In 92? 92. How did, yeah, how did he get in before um, Billy Holiday? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Buddy guy in there. Keep going. I'm a little worried. Is Where's Ray Charles at? Where's... um? Because they ain't have a better order, baby. Oh, okay. Okay, so maybe they're going to come up later. Because it's a few... Curtis Mayfield. And who else am I thinking about? Where my boy Little Richard at? Let's get to the L's. Okay. Donna Summer. Donna Summer's in here. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, my goodness. I'm not Elvis, of course. When he got inducted, the first day it opened. You give me the first day it opened. No, 1986. Etta James in here. It's only 14 pages, though. That's what worries me. I know they don't got everybody on Look, our list. They got categories. Is it, they have black people? No. Just, just, type in, <laughs> just type in his name. Put in um Ray Charles. He got to be in here. I'm sorry. Look, they like they look really looking through here. Oh, we're gonna have to start a campaign next year to get people. Okay, he in there. Okay, it makes me feel a little bit better. When he got in, oh, 86. early eighty six. I was like, come on, rock and roll. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. What about Little Richard? Then I'm done because they never give Little Richard shit. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, uh, little Richard has said it so much. I be advocating for him. They never give Little Richard. I think he's feel. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Eighty six. All right. He that was what the inaugural year. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love a good Little Richard. But um, I think Little Richard on the shook and shut in, ain't he? I think so. Because I think he said he, he done rebuked um, the men's in the makeup. I think it's the dementia talking. Ike and Tina, come on. Oh, you think Tina Matt is Ike and Tina? I don't know. I think I might be a little petty if it's Ike and Tina. I'm like, you can put his ass in there and then put me in there. We don't got to be a unit. Well, you see, they got Jackson 5 in there. And then they got Michael Jack. Oh, Jack, yeah, they do. Okay, come on here. What's the next one? Well, next year we're gonna put a pin in this, and when it come around, we voting and we getting that whole list to be black. <laughs> what? 
was is payback for um Georgia and Florida. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nero. All right, so do you want to do how to get through the holidays when you're single, or you don't want to do gift giving when they bad gift givers? Oh, bad gift givers. All right. Okay. What's going on? Are you trying to hint, or what are you trying to say? No. You, you, actually, you actually give decent gifts. I think I do. Actually, I, I pride myself on being a pretty decent gift giver because I do a mixture. I do a mixture of what you want and what I think you need. Mm-hmm. And usually what I think folks need is pretty decent. Like I try not to get trash. Like I'm not a one who just going like, to buy you some socks. Or if I'm going to buy you socks, they're going to be like cashmere socks. Mm-hmm. Or socks, like, they're going to be nice. They're going to have a purpose. Yeah. So in this article, it says, you know, you know, these are ways to make it a little bit easier if your partner give badass gifts. Um, so the first thing is said, tell them what you want. <laughs> I hate that though. That's how my no. mom is. My mom be like, "What we had? To, what did we have start doing? My, we didn't do it this year, but what did we usually do with my parents? We send a list of twelve things that we want at the beginning of the year. In that way, you can use it throughout the year. And then we do like a uh, what we did uh, secret secret Santa. Yeah. And so what we do is usually at the beginning of the year. So we missed it last year. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like right after Christmas or something like that. So you almost do it right after like the holiday. Mm -hmm. And it's good for Christmas, any holiday or any time you want to give that person a gift. So it's the birthday, Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just because special occasion. It's like a list of 12 to 15 things that you would be interested in getting. And Mm -hmm. the surprise is that, you know. You might get it throughout the year, but you don't know when. And the right. thing is, everyone's happy. So it's the element of surprise is still there. Yeah. <laughs> it is something you want, right? Compared to Christmas, like, these are the four things I want. Buy these four things. You don't know what the person's going to get. Did you enjoy that or no? Yeah, I did. It was kind of fun. Yeah. And, the thing, uh, and for, like, the holidays and stuff, we wouldn't, like, you would just get your name on it. And you would just get the gift. And you wouldn't necessarily know who it's from. Mm-hmm. That's really do- good. We do on, like, Amazon wish list. Actually, Nia was the one who put me on that a few years ago. Yeah. Actually, I need to update my wish list. I, I keep my wish list updated, even when I don't mm-hmm. order shit. Oh. Because any moment, Tyler Perry might play for it. Oh. <laughs> Tyler Perry might just go. <laughs> you know what? Let me know. I like to keep mine curated so it look up to date. I want them to see every least once a month this person is <laughs> active on it. Let me go on ahead and create a Black Love Matters wish list. Oh, ooh, ooh, blessings. Because the thing is, Tyler Perry might come and bless me, and I want to be ready for right. the blessings. Exactly. Or random people. You know, that's people, random acts of kindness. You can literally go search somebody's wish list and just send it to them. Mm-hmm. They won't know. No. Blessings. So I want to stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What else is that? Um, it says, take the lead. So it might be worth to uh, give your partner with a few things to show them that gift giving can be easy yeah. and simple. Yeah. Because, you know, some people see that shit as hard. I'm not really the best. Generic. That's why I just ask people, like, what do you want? Yeah. I want to give you something that you want. But Nerum said with an attitude. Nerum said, like, he really don't want to do it. Nerum says, like, my father do. But what do you want? I mean, do you want something? Sorry, I would like a birthday gift. Well, what do you but, want? <laughs> Let me so know. In Western cult- culture in America, where we grew up, that's kind of a norm. <laughs> well, what do you want? Mm-hmm. Shit. Uh, acknowledge other things they do do. So don't harp on the fact that they don't give good ass <laughs> gifts. <laughs> don't harp on the fact they give trash ass gifts. What was your worst gift you've ever received? Uh, from you? Period. Oh, it don't have to be from me, but you can use that as a sample. You gift me. I think it was the first Christmas we was together. You kept me them shoes, some green shoes. <laughs> those were cute, <laughs> baby. Those <laughs> shoes, Mister Mark. You hated them. <laughs> They wasn't my favorite. Why did you even wear? What happened to them? You keep everything. You're right. Where are they now? I wore them a couple times. Where are they at now? And I gave them a goodwill. They were cute Nikes. They were Nikes. Who were they? Um, Averex or something. I don't know. Don't were, do that. They were not no Nikes. They were Nikes. No, they wasn't. <laughs> they wasn't Nikes. What did you say when you got it? I was like, oh, thank you. I swear you said these are fly. You got coconut oil in your eye? Yes. Okay. You don't keep squinting, honey. Yeah, I got coconut oil in my eye. And then, well, okay, my my worst gift turn is from my parents. They take the award, always. <laughs> my parents don't do well with gifts. Um, so I always wanted a dog, hence Mabel. Um, and, and I really, Desi. And Desi. Um, I, but I, before, I, when I was younger, I was obsessed with pugs. And I really wanted a pug. And this was before pugs were popular, though. Mm-hmm. So every time I said it, people were like, that is the ugliest dog on earth. Why do you want that this dog? dog? Look, they done blew up, right? They wanted the most sought-after breeds ever. But, you know, back in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, people weren't standing for pugs like that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what they did? It was like, you have a very special, I think it was Christmas or my birthday or something. It was like, you have a very special day tomorrow. It's something you wanted for so long, so make sure you get ready. 
Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be huge. I'm like, they're getting me this dog. They're finally listening. And then I'm like, why is it a box? I was like, but you know, I watch Funniest Home White. Um, I'm sorry, Funniest Home White videos. That's what I almost said. Funniest Home videos. <laughs> and the white families have put animals in boxes. Mm-hmm. And the ball just jump out. So I'm like, let me get prepared for the dog to jump out. You know, I opened this box and it was just a pug purse. <laughs> I remember that purse. <laughs> and I ain't had a heart to be like, this is trash. Why did that purse follow you all the way to underground? Because I didn't, I never like threw it away. Or like, they'd be like, why don't you wear it? To fucking wear and it's like I was borderline too old for it. Like, where I'm going to take a pug purse to? Like, <laughs> so I just hung it on my doorknob, mm-hmm. and I just like put it on bed as decoration. It took me years. I think I was like in college when I finally gave it to the Goodwill, or like I gave it to like a younger cousin. Mm-hmm. Who buys that for their child? And a, and they gave me a pug statue. So it was a pug statue. I think I still got that statue. It was a pug statue, and it was a pug purse. Don't do that to y'all kids. Just tell them you can't get a dog. Because mm-hmm. I had other animals. I had fish, but it commit suicide. What? It just jumped out and killed itself. When I came to go to into school tomorrow to feed him, he was on the floor. You sure you ain't take him out? No, he jumped on the floor. He committed suicide. He had a rough life. Oh. <laughs> From Walmart to your house? Yeah, see, he couldn't take no more. He ain't want to live with a black family. He prejudiced. Oh, okay. But, but I know we're talking about gift giving, but also... You don't necessarily have to give a gift, right? So I also we, have we talked about, or maybe as we get closer to Christmas, if you don't, if your money is funny, you don't need to be buying no gift, Mm-mm. right? And I think there's things and experiences that you can do to replace that. So I think it's really about knowing your your wallet and also being thoughtful with it. Not that folks want like a Cartier love bracelet, right? Mm-hmm. But if your if your account's set up like that, fine. But if it's not, it's plenty of things that you can do, and to be really thoughtful about that too, yeah. and about time experiences. You know, I'm I love a good food. Somebody cooking for you, I don't know, like. It's other ways. Maybe we can think of that about that for other episodes. What do you do? How do you celebrate Christmas broke? Mm-hmm. <laughs> as an adult, because it's different as kids, right? When you broke as a kid, like you try to put something together for the kids, and you know you try to make little cute things work, right? But it's different being broke and grown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it sad? I don't know. You just don't do it. Because <laughs> I don't have friends who've been broke on Christmas. I went to their house. I thought it was like May. I said what. <laughs> I said, it's Christmas. They was like, yeah, I don't got no money. I said, but you have a whole ass Christmas tree in the closet. Why don't you at least put up a Fuck tree? That tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's capitalism. It, it, it don't cost money to put up a wreath that no. you have in your closet. That lets me know how much broke I am. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe um, next week we'll have an episode that talks about surviving Christmas broke or the holidays broke. Because as a grad student, we have many of holidays broke. And it's ways to navigate through that, right? right? Or even if you do little gifts and shit, like it's ways to do little things to still make it feel special. So maybe we'll share some of that stuff. Yeah. All right, we'll get a shout out Friday. Yeah, let's do shout out Friday. All right, Liam, go ahead. So we got a, a review on Apple Podcast. Um, it says, "Hey, sis, Bros cuz from Gache. And it says, hey, Nirm and Nyambi. I love how everybody's putting pronunciations. Hey, y'all better put them. Y'all, y'all, know, better. y'all know we'll, we'll butcher that we'll shit. We'll tear them to the ground. Y'all know we will butcher. And then get an attitude. Right. Will y'all correct us? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that somebody said our name wrong. We ready to um, sue. Look, Elena still be uh, putting uh, pronunciations. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Elena coming for your ass. It's cool. Come on, come on, finish. Uh, I recently found out about your podcast in August, and I have been faithfully listening uh, to y'all every day. You get me through my work day, my commute uh, home, and just when I'm uh, relaxing at home. I'm 22. Thank you. Thank you. And I sh- just started my first corporate job. Congratulations. I just graduated from college. All right. Uh, you you wanted to go out there. Where I go? Most kids, most. Don't most say mo- dang kids. No, young that's adults. What, that's what I said. Most motherfuckers who graduate undergrad. Don't get you know, it's a topic I want to talk about. We're going to push this next week. It's an article that came out in Slate, and it was about a black woman who's a black woman with a master's degree, and she was working as a um, janitor at Amazon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, nah, don't talk about <laughs> Nayams in the bot store Shit. and saying how black women is the most black women are the most most underemployed pers- people in America. So as a whole category of people, mm. black women are the most underemployed in the mo- in the most educated. Mm. Ooh, what type, what the oppression? The most educated. So black women, we're the most educated race. I mean, the re- educated subgroup, but we're the most underemployed. Mm. I read it, almost cried in my car. Jesus. You know, but the Lord brought me through. But I, it's almost, and now that I think of it in high school, is it just because, I don't know what it is. We'll unpack it later. But when I read it, it spoke some truth to it, right? Yeah. The most educated and the most, not unemployed, 
underemployed. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not that we're the subgroup that's unemployed, but we're underemployed. Right. Mm. And underemployed. We'll explain all this later. But yeah, it's something. Go ahead. Um, and hearing uh, Nyambi's journey really gives me reassurance that everything takes time and what's for you is it's what's, what's for, for you. you. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for being uh, so real and funny as hell. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on your corporate job. Yeah. Sis. Hell yeah. You got that 401k matched? Don't you buy that Gucci bag? Mess out your four one k. Don't you buy that bag? I know it's cute, but you and don't. How big is your apartment? Get a roommate. Get a roommate for a year, or stay with mama and daddy and mess out that four hundred one k. That's Nyambi's advice. Go ahead, Nero. Uh, so we got an email, um, and it says, "My new Midwest cuz." Mm-hmm. It says, "Hey y'all, I found this podcast about six weeks ago." Oh, no. Oh damn! Okay, and we and I've been hooked. I have not listened to radio anything besides <laughs> y'all, and I just wanted <laughs> I to wait until I finish all of them and get caught up. I just want y'all to know, uh, y'all energy give me life. Okay, thank you. Uh, I love the transparency and y'all funny as hell. Uh, I totally relate to Nyambi so much. Uh, Niram is so great and. Uh, it's so great on how he is emotionally available for Nyambi. Mm-hmm. Side note, y'all need to talk about how black men are not always understanding uh, of women's, women's emotions. emotions. Hell, black men always understanding their own emotions. True. <laughs> but yeah, plus one. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew uh, friends like y'all in real life. I will be geek about, uh, but finding y'all on this podcast is good enough. Keep up the great work. Can't get five stars uh, as I listen on Google, but it's five stars. Hey, you can still sign up for Apple ID. <laughs> Google don't have no type of review. No. You know, Google neutral because, you know, they got the search engine. So they be like, just go ahead and hit this play, honey. <laughs> they just going into this realm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, seeing the growth and transition starting from episode one to two hundreds in the last six weeks, I was in a time war and reviewed <laughs> Jaw Life in six weeks. Oh my! Oh, that was a lot then. <laughs> that was a lot because it took us a lot to do it for a year. It, it was hard for us to live it in a year. But over a year and a half, it <laughs> gave me chills, the highs, the lows of the journey, and y'all being on the other, uh, being on the other half when your partner needed it. Uh, now y'all in uh in colonizer valley making money moves Thank giving ins- inspiration and de- determination come on now uh-uh. uh, i love this platform and the realness and the black love in all forms mm-hmm. okay real quick uh why my daughter who's 13 get mad every <laughs> Wait, first of all you know 13 they about to give you some type of back talk right in some form or fashion <laughs> you know all she want to do is listen to uh cardi uh, yes, b indeed. money do you mean yes, I was gonna say indeed. yes indeed? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One time I was just sitting there, I was babies, I almost put it on. I said, Oh, they was like, let's listen to music. And I put on my Pandora. It was like money. I was like, oh, oh no, no. 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 You know, the kids start dancing. I said, No, Mm-mm-mm. we can't listen to that. Uh so why my daughter who's thirteen Mm-mm. get mad every time she get in the car and I got y'all on? Mm-hmm. She like, Mama, why don't you listen to music no more? <laughs> <laughs> you keep them on all day. <laughs> you getting old. I'm th- <laughs> she said, I'm 33, Joe. <laughs> I just found my entire life. That's all. Music ain't uh, ain't uh, offering these jewels y'all dropping. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you be writing about your um, oh, black love story. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. You can read the next one. Oh, this is from Chan. Mm-hmm. Um, it said, what's good, fam? It said, it's Chan just checking in, been listening like, mm, I haven't called for a minute. This this hoe got roaches, but oh my God. Near. Near him and this hoe got roaches, but man, I was dying just over the title. So ignorant. But it made me think of a good friend who cleans her house, but she got some and she need to fumigate Ace. <laughs> That's an oxynoron moron. <laughs> <laughs> but updates with me got a new job great hating um hating this cold in the atl it is getting colder in atl than i thought it was it getting colder every year what's mm, going on global warming um and learning how to parent with um a restraining order in place is stressful i know i know oh yeah you've been in my thoughts and prayers chan i know you're going through that too um i had to quit this job where the agent um where this agent felt like it was okay it um to throw money at me across the desk <sighs> good because you might have caught a case and you got your baby <laughs> i can't that's you know what i don't know if that's just a black woman thing or what when somebody throws some money at me 
What was that? An ATL one, big boy? You threw money. Oh, that's so disrespectful. <laughs> was that him? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's something about being money thrown at you that's very disrespectful. And you're not a stripper. Come on. If I ain't climbing up that pole, don't you throw no money at me. <laughs> okay? Listen. This is what she said. Listen. It took me. See, this is what you about to say. It took all of me not to be any of these brown, mad lady stereotypes, too. Um, I was too lit at the time. Um, just trying to find balance, any way to stay focused um, on being your best uh, uh, over there. Bye. Oh, yeah. I know, Shan. Because mm-hmm. I would have. <laughs> Blessings had never happened at the bot store. Because that would have been the last day. Oh. I never got money thrown at me. And they've done it at, like, um, cashiers. And I've mm-hmm. told cashiers, like, call me over immediately. Oh. Because we returning all this shit. Give me this bag. You ain't getting none of this. Uh-oh. You ain't getting this pine saw. <laughs> <laughs> From here. Security, <laughs> hobble your ass out here. You remember our security used to have gangrene. Mm-hmm. Hobble your ass out of here. Call the, I don't care who you call, but you ain't leaving here with that. Mm-hmm. Throwing money at me. The fuck you think this is? Oh, go ahead. No, it's weird. Oh, so this is from blacklovematters.com. It's from Toya, and it's from episode 206. It says, Nero Manayams. I felt the exact same way when I first heard the titles of his books. <laughs> I had to read it just because of that. I read the book in a day, cover to cover. Now, don't get me wrong. It is utter ratchet reading. With that being said, the actual story uh, will pull at your heart. <laughs> <laughs> actually, me and um, Tam, we actually going to read a couple. I, Tam, I don't know if I can get through more than one. I think we three I think, series. I think you we might as well read the whole I series. I think we were going to originally try to do the series. I'm sure Tam's already read them because Tam's a scholar. Um, but I was going to try to read them this weekend. And I don't know if I can get through one. How many pages is it? 33? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, how many pages is it? 20? Do it got pictures in it? Oh, what, like holes and roaches? <laughs> I'm going to read it. I'm going to read I can't guarantee I can read that. Because how many is it? Three? Yes. This whole got roaches, volume one, two, and three. Yep. Oh, my God. And then y'all might as well go ahead and do the whole series. Crack old dreams. Absolutely. Seeing no. our whole dreams. No. What I'm going to do is read one book. I, I used, I thought I, Tam, I thought I could do the series, but I can't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw just the whole book away. And it's going to be probably on my phone, some electronics. So I can't be afford to be throwing my phone. <laughs> <laughs> my shit broken up. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Is that it, Nero? Yeah. Well, thank y'all for hanging in there with us this week, um, and everything. Y'all hope y'all have a wonderful, restful weekend. I know we will. We are gonna come back with all types of good stories, um, about this um new puppy we got, and also we went to dermatologist and eye appointment. So y'all, y'all know we doing this self care too. So we'll have updates about that. Mm-hmm. Close out, Nero. Yeah, to submit your black love story, so just uh go to blacklovematters.com dot com to submit. A question for Kitchen Table Talk shooters at email blacklovematters at gmail.com to leave a comment about anything that we talked about. Uh, you go to that website. We got that SoundCloud, and we also got that voicemail, and that's at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever-evolving. Ever Peace. Peace.